Now to Donald Trump's moment of truth. Less than 24 hours before New York State can begin seizing his assets if he does not produce a bond in his $454 million fraud judgment. Tomorrow is a double trouble day for Trump. He will also attend a hearing in the hush money case, now on track to make him the first former U.S. president to face criminal trial. Joining me now, Harry Littman, former U.S. attorney and former deputy assistant attorney general during the Clinton administration, now host of the Talking Feds podcast and legal affairs columnist with the Los Angeles Times, and here with me on set, Adam Pollack, former assistant attorney general of New York. Gentlemen, welcome to you both. Uh, we'll reach out long distance first to you, Harry. So the New York Times says today that these cases represent two of Trump's greatest fears, a criminal conviction and then the public perception that he does not have as much cash as he claims. Is Trump having an existential moment right now, or is it too soon to call it that? Oh, no, I don't think it's too soon to call it that. I think it is an existential moment. But I think the Times piece is dead on because... His, you know, we know he's, um, for example, declared bankruptcy, at least his companies have half a dozen times, and now he's in a different position as a political candidate. What? But one uh, through line for Donald Trump is he has mortal fear of being a loser. And having come out and declared, contrary to his lawyers on Friday, that he has the money in hand, if he tomorrow comes up short and lets Tish James begin the process of attaching his assets, he's a loser. So with no great financial sophistication on my part, maybe a, a little bit of how it would work, my best guess is he somehow comes up with it. But all the scenarios, true social being the best, I'm sure Adam and you will go into that. Uh, but of all those scenarios, they, they nevertheless uh, really enact existential harm on him. He could, he could win in the sense of having the money on hand, but it would be a total, total uh, devastating blow to his business in New York. So he here's a scenario I want to play out with you, Adam, and that being, um, you said that Tish James might be willing to accept 250 to $300 million in payment for the judgment that is due to him. First of all, why do you think that is a possibility? And secondly, if any regular person was to pay a good chunk portion of what they have due, would the rest of that be forgiven? Is that, or would that just be a down payment for Donald Trump? I mean, how would this work? I think it's a great question. Look, most cases, most court cases settle. They do. Mm -hmm. And here mm -hmm. the attorney general's office, the attorney general has some risk of an appeal, that the Trump appeal might be successful. And I think in any kind of court case, a compromise is sometimes warranted. Spitballing numbers. If it's a $450 million judgment, if Trump were to come with his checkbook open and offer $300 million, I think the office would have to responsibly consider that. Mm -hmm. Okay. But again, anybody else? I mean, is that normal? Do you make deals and. I think that's normal. Okay. I think lawyers are continuously evaluating risk, mm -hmm. evaluating what might happen on appeal. And coming to some kind of compromise can benefit everybody. Okay. So, um, Adam, what about Letitia James preparing today uh, in the event that Trump does not come up with the cash? Then what happens? So, tomorrow, I don't think that we'll see a made for TV moment, a swarm of attorneys general rushing out to seize assets. What you should see is a kind of quiet behind the scenes process. In New York City, there are sheriffs mm -hmm. and there are marshals, kind of like Wild West meets Manhattan. And the sheriffs and marshals can go to banks, executions in hand. This is kind of a formal legal document. Nobody dies except for the assets. <laughs> Come to the banks, hand an execution to a branch manager, and start the process of draining the assets from those bank accounts. That's probably the first move. The law says that the bank account has to be emptied forthwith. OK, so, Harry, if this hush money case, as we move uh, towards that case, if that goes forward, Trump then earns the very dubious distinction of becoming the first former American president to face criminal trial. Stormy Daniels, the potential star witness, says she's ready to testify. Can this case turn into a wild card? Can it be more damaging to Trump than he may expect? I think it could in the sense that uh, Bragg is trying hard to make a point uh, to the American people that I think is a valid point, which is it's not a hush money case exactly. It's not an, a sex case. 
It's a voter deception case. Why did he do it? He did it because he was in precarious position after the Access Hollywood tape came out, and he wanted to keep that information from the voters so he could win the election. That makes it seem not of the moment necessarily of January uh, 6th or Fulton County, but still not a just uh, kind of long past peccadillo. It's a serious attempt to deceive voters. Just wanted to say very quickly about Adam's point, which I agree. The idea of a settlement here would be not to reduce the bond, which he's trying to do still with the Court of Appeals. It would be to end the case. So if they make that deal, it's all over, and he and he can't appeal any longer. He's saying, I'll give you this amount, uh, as opposed to just trying to reduce it, which I think mm. your question is right to assume. I, she wouldn't be dispensing that kind of charity to him just willy-nilly. Mm. Okay. Uh, let me get with you, Harry, first on the classified documents case. Yeah. And that... Um, the head scratcher, if you will, of a ruling that has led to a firestorm of calls for Judge Cannon's removal. She is asking the prosecution to write jury instructions that could lead to Trump's acquittal. I mean, never mind the fact that there's no jury in place because there's no trial date set. What is happening there? And can Jack Smith really get her off the case? Does he want to do that? If you look at the big picture. No doubt he wants to do it. I mean, this they were thinking at the start this was the downside, and I think they just got unlucky. But the two questions, Alex, are very connected, because in my mind, the best explanation for the wholeheartedly bizarre ruling she entered is she's looking to somehow make a ruling for Trump after the trial begins. Jury instructions would be then, and she did this in another order. And the uh, really pernicious aspect of that is, if he's already, if the jury's been impaneled and she dismisses the case for whatever crazy reason, he cannot be retried under the Constitution. And that goes to the point, could Jack Smith now move to uh, recuse her? It's hard because I think by design, she hasn't given him much to hold on to. She's asked them to engage in this academic discussion that is A, irrelevant, and B, assumes completely wrong facts, as you say. But, you know, they're just talking here. So, in other words, I think it's by design something that is hard for Smith to take up. If he, if he comes uh, in response and doesn't give her what she wants and she enters an order, that then might eventuate a an appeal. But I think it's not easy right now to grab on to something that the 11th Circuit can say, aha, you messed up again, you're out. Let me ask you something. I want to go back to the hush money case. And, and you, you talk about uh, election interference type thing. You didn't use those exact words. But how important yeah. is the vernacular around this, Harry? Because, yeah, in the media, we've dubbed it the hush money case. I was talking with another journalist about this yesterday. And the fact that that's what it's called. But the reality is, why was it a hush money case? Well, to not put this information out there prior to the election. So, uh, you know, election yeah. interference. Do you think attorneys and the judge are looking at that particular case under the guise of election interference? Well, that I, attorneys and judges, no. I think they're looking at the case in front of them and the evidence in front of them, and they want to win their case. But Trump and Team Trump and the Republican Party and the whole American political system, mm -hmm. I think, at least the ones who are most involved, uh, the Democrats and not just the Democrats, people who think it's important for the, this issue to be something all voters of all stripes consider, I think, are now casting about for another uh, way of, of quickly you, another soundbite. And my choice that I've just stumbled on this morning, mm -hmm. we'll see if it has legs, Alex, is voter deception. I think gotcha. it really is a voter gotcha. deception okay. case. Okay. And last quick question to you, Adam, and that being uh, you spoke about maybe $300, $400 million rather than the ballpark $450 million being due. Do you think Tish James is going to cut him some slack in that regard tomorrow? Does it make sense to you that she would do that? I think it makes sense to move on parallel tracks, start moving to seize assets, and always keep in the back pocket settlement negotiations open.